Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today, March 7th, Apple held a media event in San Francisco, California, where they announced the next generation iPad and new Apple TV. I'm going to go over the iPad first, and then I'll kind of talk about the Apple TV. There's not much there though. The real star of this show is the new iPad. And I'm just going to kind of take what I say in this video from my features expose on my website, and I'll have a link to that down below in the more info if you want to read up about the new iPad and all of its features. And as I just mentioned today, Apple announced their new iPad with a stunning retina display, 5 megapixel eyesight camera, and ultra fast 4G LTE. With one of the highest quality screens available on the market and major overall revisions, Apple's iPad is better than ever before. And as a prelude to this features overview, I felt it necessary to mention that the new iPad's title is just that, the new iPad. During Apple's media event, they actually referred to the latest iPad as both the new iPad and the third generation iPad. So it would seem as if Apple has finally broken the monotonous nomenclature that has been used since the iPhone 4's release. And although it can be argued that the iPhone 4S broke this cycle, the new iPad is really the first post-PC product that Apple has developed since the original iPhone and iPad that isn't accompanied by a lackluster suffix. And basically what I mean by that is the first iPad was just called the iPad, the second generation iPad was called the iPad 2, so it was accompanied by that too. So the new iPad is just called the new iPad, and this is actually fairly big for Apple because they're breaking away from that numbering system that everybody is starting to use, and they're going back to the basics. So first up, we have the breathtakingly crisp Retina display with four times as many pixels as its predecessor's display, a total of 3.1 million pixels and 264 pixels per inch. The Retina display will certainly be one of the new iPad's key selling points. And the Retina display features a 2048 by 1536 resolution, and that's four times as many pixels as what the iPad 2's display offers, and it's a million more pixels than what's on standard HD 1080p. So this thing is higher quality than your HD 1080p TV. Next up, we have the A5X chip. The new iPad is powered by a completely upgraded dual-core A5X processor with quad-core graphics. And yes, I did say a dual-core processor. This does not have a quad-core processor. The actual chip itself has a dual-core processor and it has quad-core graphics. So basically, it's an upgraded A5 processor with improved graphics. And it's also said to perform even better than the A5 chip. So once it's released, we'll just have to see what happens when it's put to the test. And the the A5X chip with quad-core graphics is obviously the reason that the iPad can support such a high quality display and such a high resolution. And of course, even with the Retina display and the A5X chip, the iPad will retain the same legendary 10-hour battery life as its predecessors. Now the camera has also been fully upgraded. The new iPad comes equipped with a five megapixel eyesight camera. It's designed with advanced optics allowing for easy, quick, and high quality photo capturing. The eyesight camera can also record HD video in full 1080p, and thanks to the type of technology used, it also automatically stabilizes video. Now while megapixels matter, the optics, image signal processor, and software are just as important. The eyesight camera is packed with advanced optics, allowing for an improved aperture, and the eyesight camera also has a five element lens and a hybrid infrared filter. And typically this type of filter is exclusive to SLR cameras, and it's intended to keep out the harmful IR light and to better capture pictures. With ultra fast 4G LTE, the new iPad can browse the web, stream different forms of media, and download content faster than ever before. The 4G LTE version is also capable of operating on GSM and UMTS networks across the the world including HSPA Plus and DCHS DPA. And now in ideal conditions, users will experience download speeds of up to 42 megabits per second over LTE and 21.1 megabits per second over HSPA+. Now as we all know with the iPhone 4S and real world applications, it doesn't receive the same download speeds as Apple claimed that it would back when they revealed the iPhone 4S. So we'll just have to see if this new iPad's download speeds over 4G are as fast as they claim they are because if they're 42 megabits per second, that is absolutely a 
extraordinary for a mobile device. But again, I highly doubt it. We'll just have to put it to the test when it's released and when we get it in our hands. And best of all, if your carrier supports it, the new iPad can be used as a personal hotspot to share its internet connection over Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or USB, just like with the iPad 2. And finally, with dictation, instead of actually typing, users will be able to search the web, create notes, write emails, and documents easier than ever before. To use dictation, users simply have to tap the microphone icon on the keyboard, say what they want typed, tap done, and voila, the iPad transcribes what it hears. Now, unfortunately, the iPad is still missing Siri support, so we do not have Siri, we just have the ability to actually transcribe what we say to the iPad when we're typing something. And what's crucial to take into account here is that Siri is still in beta according to Apple, so hopefully once they get everything worked out, we will see Siri on the iPad, and if it's not this iPad, then hopefully it will be the next generation iPad after this new iPad. With all of the great new features and the same price structure as the iPad 2, the new iPad is a must-have gadget for Apple and tech enthusiasts everywhere. Now, it will be released on March 16th, and it's available for pre-order on Apple's website today, March 7th. So that basically concludes the portion of this video talking about the new third generation iPad. Let's kind of move on to the Apple TV. Now, while this is the next generation Apple TV, it's practically identical to its predecessor, so the Apple TV 2. It basically looks the same, feels the same, it's the same dimensions as its predecessor, and it even comes with everything that the Apple TV 2 came with, including the same exact remote. So the remote hasn't changed from the previous version to this version either, and basically the only real difference is it comes with some upgraded internal components and it has a single core A5 processor and it also allows for full 1080p HD video playback and that's to better accompany the iPad with its retina display. So now when you AirPlay mirror to your Apple TV or to this new Apple TV from the new iPad, it will look better than before. And that pretty much sums it up. There are a couple of other minor things announced at today's media event. And they're basically just pertaining to the iWork and iLife suite available for iOS. And if you wanna see exactly what was announced, you can check out my web Website because I did do a live blog so you'll be able to see what was talked about when at Apple's media event I'll have a link to that down below in the more info as well as my expose on the new third generation iPad so I hope you guys liked this video please remember to rate it up if you did leave any comments down below in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already until next time this is ICU signing out